Hello and welcome to another episode of DEIB Outdoors. I'm your host, Lisa Kellner Williams, and today we have a very special guest joining us, Luisana Mendez from Hoyas Latinas. Hoyas Latinas was born to empower Latinx communities to engage in outdoor recreation through year-round inclusive and culturally responsive outdoor recreational activities to promote well-being and connections to nature, as well as to foster a sense of belonging and to strengthen community bonds. Welcome to the podcast, Luisana. Thank you, Lisa. It's great to have you here. It's Friday night for both of us. Nice way to end the week. So tell me, how and when did Hoyas Latinas begin? Yes, well, I thought more than two years ago when pandemic came, and I found myself a little lonely and I get the experience about anxiety to mm. be in just indoor. And I just started to just go out and take a small walk or short walk around my neighbor um, and go to the park, it's close to my house. And I start feeling good. And I think, oh, this feel better day by day. So I start going even twice a day, early in the morning and uh, in the evening. And I feel, I get the, the heal for what I am living in that moment. And I use I start uh, meeting different parts around the city, something I already did since I arrived in Minnesota in 2018, but now with more uh, intention to meet the park or, um, or explore the park and hiking. So I start inviting my friends, a couple of my family here, and I just feel this is good. I decide to be part of the different challenge. One of the things is, well, the first one was the 52 hike challenge in 2020. And the other was the hiking club and the passport club for the state parks of Minnesota. So mm. I shared with my close friend, I said, oh, I started the challenge. I want to complete this. Please help me and, you know, support me in this challenge because I never believe I will be able to complete that. So since then, all my meeting with my friends, when we set out for hen it was in the park. Okay, let's go to fight. Let's go to fight. That was all my invitation for everybody. So I started making connection with parks and, uh, you know, with St. Paul Parks and Recreation at the city where I live, we, I applied for a program for bringing the Latino community to, to meet the park for a walk, a nature walk or, or hiking with families, Latino families. And they approved the program, and I start. I remember it was a program of six eight walk walk. Mm. So we go around different parts, and families come with pets, with kids, with olders, uh, and it was beautiful. And when we end the program, everybody see each other, and we just ask about now, what is now? What yeah. And I I just share. Well, I am hiking because I am doing this challenge. What I will do, we can do a group. Chat, a chat group and I will keep going and I will invite everybody who can come with me. Let's go together. So that is how everything starts. So I make the the programs or the activities and invite people, people come, other parts tell me about the same initiative to develop a program for Latino community. And I just say, yes, let's go, let's do it. Yeah, little by little talking with the community we feel the the um, the curiosity to explore the park in different ways. So that's why we do also we hike, but we do birding or we kayak, canoe for camping during the winter for cross country ski, snowshoes. And I you say we learn together, we exchange experience together, and that is how everything is coming. <laughs> Amazing. So. Before the pandemic, did you have any outdoor experience? Like you mentioned, snowshoeing, kayaking, all those outdoor activities. So, well, nothing, nothing, any experience with winter activities because in my country, Venezuela, and we don't have snow. I remember myself doing hiking, even when I don't have the knowledge, what I am doing was hiking. So I just mm. go for a park, I take a walk and explore around one lake, go to the top of the mountain. Not very often because, yeah, the situation in my country don't allow me that. 
but in a couple of times I did. Yes, I was hiking there and I love being nature. I I grew up surrounded nature. I am from the Cordillera Andina in the middle of big two mountains and and being the part of being around the nature is a big part of my life. Mm-hmm. But yes, I don't have the knowledge, oh, I am doing this. In Minnesota, when I arrive and I start going out, just see what's around me. I want to meet the city. And for me, it was the way I can recognize the place I am living right now and also feel I belong. Mm, that's great. And yeah, so it was probably inspiring for other people to see you like, hey, I don't know anything about snowshoeing. You know, at any level, anybody can come and let's try to be a part of a community that we live in. Um, yeah, that is, uh, that is a key. I am an immigrant. I ex experiment for first hand all the all the feeling about I don't know snow, I don't know winter, I don't know any kind of winter sports or even outdoor sports because different barrier language or knowledge or equipment or, or experience. So that is why I invite everybody and say, let's go together, let's learn together. We can find a way we can enjoy this and have a better time here. What's cool about your group is you already had a base of people from that program in the park um, because they had ended and then they were saying, now what? How has it grown since your official group began? Yeah, I think in that moment, I keep in touch with around 60 families. So mm-hmm. I remember each the capacity for each one was used because mm-hmm. COVID, COVID restrictions. Oh. So I know some families repeat a walk. I can see around 60 families because I start promotion the, the hiking group, like where is it in a hiking group and people start sign out and be in the chat group. That group, I believe more than 100 families. Right now, I think the final number for these two years is more than. Wow, congratulations. It's super crazy. That yeah, crazy. thank you. It's super crazy when, yeah, when I see all what I'm doing with Guaya Sadinas, always, I think it's what? I can believe even this year, I did more than 80 activities in one year. Wow. So, so more than once a week. Exactly. So I mm. say, okay, how this works? And then of the day, I feel so grateful for having this opportunity because I know each activity can impact in a better way for a family or for people who are right in Minnesota. Mm. People can have and enjoy the activity, learn new skills, make any friends or find something in the nature they are looking for. Yes. And they might not even realize what they're looking for or what they need to see, but yeah, it comes upon them, which is the beauty of nature. So it's grown so much, which is wonderful and extra wonderful because you live in one of the coldest places in the United States. <laughs> How do you encourage people to come out in the months, say, from December to March. Yeah, Minnesota. Uh, the first experience for expression for people is, oh my God, super cold. Yeah, whatever cold you think is worse. <laughs> I believe the first, my first couple years here was super hard. My, yeah, my first winter, I don't drive. I just take a bath and I work in the, in the night shift. So for me, it was more about the challenge for survive. Yes. You know, but, I learned how to dress properly and the things I can use to be safe or what I can do to be safe in, in the cold, like crampons in my shoes mm-hmm. to don't fall in the in the snow on the sidewalk or all this kind of thing. So for me it was, okay, I can do this for survive. Now I can do this for enjoy. So I learned about snowshoes. I learned about cross on the ski and you I was I just out and tried that activities and I love it and I start making the partnership with parks and bring community for that. So every time I say to the community, yes, yeah, here is winter. Winter is long. Winter is cold. Winter is it's, it's dark. <laughs> we don't have too much light, uh, light natural light during the the day. So I try to. Share my experience. This is what I do. Have fun during the winter. I use vitamin D, the LED lamp, the artificial lamp, and I try to go out. I I teach people how to dress appropriately mm-hmm. and hands warming. When we start a high, before we start a high, I make the inspection. So 
this is not the right shoes, this is the right pan, I advise you to get this, or I switch my initial plan for a hike, even if I will hike in the snow, I try mm -hmm. to take a pavement trail without snow because somebody are in tennis shoe. So I, yeah, I try to make all the accommodation for get a good experience for people. That's great. So they can A, still enjoy the trip, the, the walk, and B, then they are equipped with knowledge. So the next time they come, they'll get hand warmers or crampons or whatever they need to be yes. safe. I think mean, the challenge for all immigrants, besides the language, of course, yes. <laughs> most of the time we don't, yeah, I don't speak uh, English five years, six years ago. It's about, for example, navigation in the park. Here in Minnesota, because winter, all the trails change the use. When, where we hide during the summer now is cross country ski, so mm -hmm. we can hide there. So I don't know that before. I just take a walk with my friend, let's go hiking. And when we are in the middle of the trail, people use the skis going and get out the trail, get out the path. And we are super scared out off the trail trying to find the, the end, the entry of the park. And we was super crazy, but we learned, oh, so in the winter, we have to check the map. We have to learn what is the right trail for winter hiking. And so now I teach that. Not only people come and share the, the activity with me, it's building the capacity they can go for themselves and for their friends or their families. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so much learning by doing, yeah, learning by making mistakes and almost getting run over by cross country <laughs> skiers. Uh, but yeah, but then they can take the knowledge and do it on their own, which is great. That's very empowering for people. So, what are some of the hikes that you do? Tell me about some of the activities you do with the group. You can use this year for an example of the types of things. And if you could, because people aren't familiar many with the Twin Cities, if you could explain like how big the parks are or like just give a little more context. Oh, yeah. Well, between the Twin Cities, St. Paul and Minneapolis, then we have 64 regional parks and we have also 75 state parks. But we go out and between 50 and 20 minutes, we are already in a lake or in a park. But most of the people don't have the, the information or the information is in English or mm -hmm. yeah, we find different barriers. But yeah, I think the popular activities I do all this time is hiking. But year by year, we add new experience. Like we start doing camping, we start doing kayaking, ice fishing. I don't fish. But bring the ice fishing to the community and see how that works. It's just, it's just building the curiosity and, and get the first experience. Maybe people like, maybe they don't like. Another couple of activities super good and very popular is the snowshoes and cross-country ski. And this mm -hmm. year, we start doing backpacking. We already did one experience with canoeing and camping. So we canoe like 10 miles, camping in the spot, and continue to the next day six miles or, or canoeing. We try to get the experience for different things. For, yes. for me, it's just get out. Try everything. And you will yeah. get in love with something. Something new we are doing also is forest baking experience. Oh, we beautiful. Have, yeah, we have a couple last year and this year, two more. And now I am in, in the process of the certification for forest baking. Oh. So that is something new for Wea Latina next year share this experience with more people and also in Spanish because the experience mm. with guests is in English, but now I'd be able, I will be able to offer in Spanish and I'm super, super excited for that. That's great. Yeah, I have interviewed someone on this podcast. I'll leave a link in the show notes to someone. Yeah, once you get certification, we can meet up because maybe <laughs> there's opportunity to walk with them and do a Spanish translation, you know, or something like that. It could be fun. There's so many benefits to forest bathing about self-discovery. So you're just constantly adding different activities to what you offer. The idea is show people they can connect when, get the connection with themselves or with nature in different ways. We offer the outdoor photographic workshop. So we focus and learn how to take photos in, in nature for nature. So we teach, that is the way you can, connect with with the nature because you know hiking go out with no goal in in a specific place and come back like boring for some of people 
Mm -hmm. But try to add uh, different components, people feel more curious. And we yes. learn together and we when we learn more things, we add more things. Like if we did a program with a I don't know the word really, the Polynesia, Polynesia, for bees? <laughs> uh, pollinators, yeah, the pollinators. pollinators. Yes, yes. Thank you. So now when we are hiking and we see the bees, now I can see, oh, this is a bumblebee, this is a carpenter bee, and the same for flowers or kind of grass or also for, for mushrooms. So this too much we can learn outdoors. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we it's, it's just add things and I... I continue to say pushing the curiosity of the people. And you're you're encouraging them to maybe push their, you, you mentioned families, push their kids and, you know, future generations and just always be curious and always and always think. Yeah, there are walking. many elements you can add for the, with the, or through the photography and also learn about the animals. They, they live in the, in the parks. Recently, we did a program for learn, learn about Turkey mm -hmm. and I was, Turkey. I don't know. Let's go. Let's, let's see how this works. And it was super fun. And I was surprised how much I enjoyed the activity just learn about the the physical aspect about turkeys and the interesting animals they are and also the, the beautiful they are. They live amongst us. We live amongst them. So it's great to know what we're all a part of. So you have done so much with Huellas Latinas, but I know from reading about you that you have done a lot for yourself that recently you did a through hike on the Superior Hiking Trail. Can you tell people a little bit about the trail and especially if they're not from your area and what was your adventure? Yeah, this is a big project. So that is why I say when you go out, you never know where this experience will I start with a short walks and now I, I am trying to do through hiking. The Super Hiking Trail is just one portion of the North Country Trail. The North Country Trail mm -hmm. going through North Dakota, I believe, through New York, maybe, all different I think in the north side of the state. There are 4,800 miles, all mm -hmm. the North Country Trail, the bigger, the longer one in the country. And the Super Hiking Trail is just one section in Minnesota. They have 310 miles. You can hide even in southbound or northbound. And I start from the south to the north. That is right before the city Duluth. I don't have this kind of experience before. I never backpacking. I even through hiking, never alone. And and but I did a very good program with the community and with my family. The original plan: I will hide a couple of days with my niece. Mm -hmm. Next, I will meet the community in a camping. The next a couple of days, I will hide with another member of the community. And um, weekend by weekend, some families will be go and check with me and cool. spend time with me. That is the original plan. Of course, I try to be ready, physical, because it's a hard hiking. Mm -hmm. Even more because around the city is just flat. And that part is a little more rocky, rock and uh, more elevation. And also because you are carrying uh, more than yeah. 300, 30 or 40 pounds in your back. And also mentally, because being the wild alone, it can be a scare for uh, women, and especially, yes. I don't know, for me. And and I plan where I will sleep, where I will eat, all these kind of things, the planning I can be. Uh, I plan to hide 23 days, mm. but, you know, everything doesn't work for the original plan. And my second day, my key, my stuff broken. <laughs> I don't oh, no. eat nothing in the second day, use the snacks until I can, I get the reemplace of the stuff. I meet beautiful people. I have beautiful trail angels. That is amazing. You have to accommodate for whatever you are living in the moment. You never, mm. you plan in paper will be the reality. And also I get a deeper connection with nature like in one moment I think I was listening to trees I was listening to mm. the nature what the nature has to tell me most about my towns in the moment was about I think a lot in immigrants I think a lot about Venezuelan people and another immigrants right now are walking across the the Dayton jungle to cross Colombia 
to Panama. That is a million, a million of people without experience doing that, without equipment, without safe, uh, unless safe, you know? Mm -hmm. I was safe because I can go out easily from the trail and go to the city, but there. So that made me think, be more grateful and appreciate what mm -hmm. we have. Um, so fortunately, day five, I injured my left ankle. So mm -hmm. my a couple last days, I started hiking with a lot of pain mm -hmm. because, yeah, my health and, and my ankle, I don't want to go for worse situ situation. I just hiked seven days. I complete 70 miles. And yeah, I see back and say, oh my God, how I did that. It was crazy. I When I see the photos and I saw myself, Climbing the, the Ellis Peak, it's a rock. Climbing rock with a 40 pounds in my back. The weather was perfect. The view, the, you know, all I found in, the, in my experience was, was perfect and was beautiful. And I am just super excited for next year, the snow melting and keep doing. Because, yeah, my plan is, is keep doing and finish the trail and oh get a gosh. similar experience in another part of the country. I feel like you could, did you blog about your experience? Because I no, feel like yet. there's a book in there. <laughs> no, okay. yes. I, in my website, I am doing a couple videos about experience and learnings day by day. I have all the material to share because that is one of my goals. I want to, yes, hide for myself to get the experience, but also spring the voice. We are here. Latinos are here. Latinos mm -hmm. love outdoor outdoor activities and we want more opportunities to do the backpacking trip it's expensive super expensive i already asked for help in my community and thank you for everybody who helped me to get my equipment to go there so we want a uh, or oh, oh, ask to the parks and 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 all these agencies create create let's go create together this program now as empower women we can try <laughs> let's do everybody would i say in the first couple months when i spray the voice i will do this and you go alone and you will bring a gun with you i say yes i will go alone i that, that will be fine that will be even if you are scared and you still do it that you know that is i think always a sign of bravery that yeah in spite yeah. of being scared or realizing you know this isn't the safest that you still do it i was yeah. super scared and i bring i don't know i think 20 items regarding safety like <laughs> the beer spray the fire alarm there's something to put on yes. i bring many things to build safe I'm always thinking of, about those kinds of things, but yeah, if you're prepared, which you've given examples of being prepared for the cold. So of course you would be being prepared for your own personal safety. And yes, it might add an extra five pounds to, to your backpack, but <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's worth having for sure. Yeah. So not so good to keep in mind is be prepared emotionally and mentally, because when you be out or you're home, everything can happen. I will be exposed in the height, like a fall, a broken something, be lost or get the spray with a beer or something like that. And I think my injury was the less, the easy thing can happen to me. And mm -hmm. I feel grateful for that. I don't feel like quit my hike or quit my journey. I just care about myself and I mm -hmm. show self-love. That is why I take my, my rest time now for recovering my, my ankle. And that is important to keep in mind. It's mm -hmm. no, you know, about the goal or the finish something. It's, it's more about the journey and the experience you will, you are getting doing something. Yes. Wow. You have a lot of inspiration. It's true. So how is your ankle now? A few months it's after. Better. I still mm -hmm. feel a little funny when I mm -hmm. hike more than two, high, two miles. I still feel funny, but yeah, I think the tendons recovery take time. I will be better next year yeah. and that is why i say we keep doing even when i can't be there for one week and third week but also mm -hmm. i will try to be there most of the time i can where my uncle allowed me but you're just going to have more adventures like you said it's it's <laughs> it's just your your journey so how can people find out about that everything that we just talked about related to the through hike so they're prepared for next year. And how can people find out about the Juez Latinas? Uh, Everybody can find the activities right in the website, the okay. Latinas.com, also in the Instagram. And everybody's yes. welcome. Even 
when they don't speak uh, Spanish. This is a good place for learn, practice, or get a new experience. The only requirement is, yes, come. If you love Latino community, if you love our food or uh, culture, because that is we are. We just talking about food, <laughs> about parties, about all these kind of things, and we love kiss and hugging people. So that is the only thing <laughs> different. Yes, <laughs> hugging is required. And we talk a lot. That we don't. We don't thinking about personal space. We want to know the name of your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Yes. So everyone understands the ground rules. It sounds like a very open, warm uh, environment and a very cold environment outside of it. <laughs> That's great. Well, Luisana, are you ready for a few lightning round questions? Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. If someone wanted to start a group of their own, bringing diverse groups in to uh, outdoor recreation, what is one tip you would give them? The first thing is listen to the community, what they want, what they, they would like to do, and be kind, be empathized with people. I really believe all, all people or each person bring different experience to the group. And that is important. Empathy is very important. Okay, great. Now the final question deals with paying it forward. That's the reason I have my blog is to shine light on people like you who are bringing diversity and belonging to outdoor recreation. Who are some people or groups that you would like to give a shout out to who have been doing some wonderful things uh, bringing diverse groups out? I share time this year with Latino Outdoor. They did the national come out for the 10 years anniversary uh, was my first experience with them and it was wonderful i wow. think they are doing amazing jo job across the country awesome yeah they have a branch here in boston yeah i'll give a link to them well it was a pleasure to hear about how everything came about how you just were hiking without knowing you were hiking in <laughs> Venezuela to going 70 miles in seven days in just a few years. It's absolutely incredible and inspirational. And I hope everyone gets a lot out of this. So thank you very much for taking time out. Thank you. I very, it was my pleasure to be here. I am very, very honored to be and spend this time with you.